Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 2 of the bot coding tutorial series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this episode, we're going to be creating our first command and we're going to be using something on Discord known as a slash command. So if you don't know what a slash command is, I'll show you an example here on my own server. So if you type a slash in the chat, you'll see that these are all commands that have been defined by these bots. So we use Dino for moderation on the server. As you can see, Dino has different commands such as color, uh, random dad jokes, dog pictures, anything at all. So if we run slash dog, for example, we can see it didn't send a message. It sent that command directly to Dino, the bot. So that's what we're going to be using for our bots during this series. Since, as I said in the last episode, the message create uh, intent is going away in April of this year. So we want to be able to future proof our bot as much as possible. So we're going to be sticking to that during this series. So the first thing we need to do in this file is define discord.js. So what we're doing is basically we installed discord.js in the last episode. And what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be taking discord.js and using it in this file basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type const discord equals require discord.js. So what that has done now is it's taken the discord.js package that we installed and it's storing it inside of the discord variable. So now throughout our code, we can access all of Discord's properties or Discord.js's methods through this Discord variable here. So now that we have Discord.js imported, what we're going to do is create a new bot, which is basically taking uh, Discord.js's bot class and creating our own instance of it. So like we've just pulled Discord into here from Discord.js, we're now going to be creating a new bot. So we're going to do const bot equals new Discord. As you can see, we're using the Discord variable we used to find up here, dot client. So basically what this is doing is taking the Discord we imported and making a new client. So the one option, as you can see up here, since we're using Visual Studio Code, it lets us know what we can put in here. The one option we need is intents, which is basically those, what we saw last time on the dashboard is now we're gonna be including into here. So we're gonna do discord.intents.flags.guildmembers. So what that is doing now is letting us access properties for guild members. We will also want to add in discord.intents.flags.guilds. And that should be all that we need for now. So now that we have our bot ready to go, we can do bot.on. So on is basically an event listener. So whatever event we specify in here, whenever every time that event happens, the bot will execute whatever code we have after it. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in ready. So this is whenever the bot has successfully connected to Discord and is online. We're going to put a comma and now it's asking us for some code to run if this event happens. So as you can see down here, they give you examples and everything in Visual Studio Code. So we don't need any variables for this. So we can just do two brackets and then an arrow pointing to curly brackets. So basically what we're doing here is these brackets are saying if we need any information through the ready event, which we don't get any through this anyway, but let's say uh, it was the slash commands uh, event or the interaction event, we'd need the interaction of the slash command that was run in here to be able to then process it depending on what command the user ran. But for now with the ready event, we don't need any information other than knowing that the bot is online. So what we can do with this is just type in console.log. This basically outputs to your console, your developer console that you can see. So we're just gonna put in the bot is online. So one final thing that we need to do before we can see that our bot is working is we'll need to do bot.login. And then in here, we're gonna put our token. So the token that we defined in the first episode, we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it into quotation marks in here. All right, and now that we have that good to go, you wanna make sure you press Control S or Command S on Mac Every time that you make a change to the file, you want to press Command S and that will save the file before you start the bot. So we're going to head up to Terminal and we're going to click New Terminal. And as you can see, we basically get a command window down here. So what you want to do 
is type npm i nodemon. So I didn't install this in the last episode, but this is a really useful tool to have, as every time you save the file, it will automatically restart your bot and update the changes. So we're going to do the same command as last time, node package manager install nodemon. And once that is installed, you can just type nodemon and index.js. And as you can see now, the bot is online. So now if we head on over to Discord, we can see that our tutorial bot is online. So as of right now, the bot does nothing apart from say that's online. But what we're going to be doing now is creating our first command. So in our previous episode, we had a message event. Well, sorry, previous series, we had a message event, which looked at the messages that users were typing in the chat. Now, all of those messages may not have been relevant to the bot, because obviously every message won't be a command. So what Discord have done is they've added slash commands, as I showed you at the start of this video. And what we're going to be doing is basically allowing users to directly talk only to the bot to run commands, which is Discord's new way of handling things. So the first thing that we want to do is run let commands equal bot dot application dot commands. So what this is doing is getting the registered commands with our bot and we're going to want to create a new command. So we're going to do commands dot create. And anytime you're running a function such as create or something that does something, you want to put two brackets at the end. And this is then where you will take any inputs. So for this one, we need an object, which is defined by two curly brackets. And inside the object, we're going to put a name. So let's call it um, hello. And we're going to put a description. And let's just call the description uh, reply hello to the user. So one quick step we do need to do before we head back to Discord is head back to the developer portal and head back to the URL generator. So one thing that you need to do to use slash commands is while you do have to press bot, you also have to press application.commands. So this basically allows the bot to access slash commands within the server. So you want to click application.commands. I'm going to go to administrator again and I'm going to click copy, paste it into your browser and select a server. And there you go. So now if we head back to our server, we'll see there's the tutorial bot. And if I type slash hello or slash h, you'll see there it auto fills the hello command. Right now it won't do anything, but as you can see, it does send the command to the bot. So what we'll need to do is make another event. So I'm going to do bot.on, but this time it's going to be called interaction create. And basically slash commands are known as an interaction, as a user interacting with the bot. So every time a user interacts with the bot, we will get the event given through this function here. So this time we need to take in an interaction. And then we do the same as before. So before we didn't take in anything, now we're taking in an interaction. So whatever the interaction the user did. So for now, we're only going to be looking at commands. So we can do if interaction dot is command. And we want to put a exclamation mark at the front of this. This means if it's not true. So if we had this here, it would mean if it was a command, we're just going to do if it's not a command, return. And what that means basically is if the interaction the user is given is not a slash command, the not a slash command, then return and do nothing else in the code. Return just means stop the code there. So now we know that anything going past this point here is a command. What we can do is we can get the command name, interaction dot command name. And we can get the options the users put in. So we're going to do let options equal interaction dot options. So you can ignore options for now. It's something that we'll use later. So an option is basically an argument, which is, for example, let's say someone does, uh, let's, let's say we had a kick command and it took in a user as an option. That is basically when we'd be using the options. But for now, all we need is the name. So we can do if name equals equals. So if it's equal to, and let's go with hello. What we want to do is uh, interaction dot reply. And do you want to pass into here the content to reply with? So we're going to reply with the word hello. And if we want, we can pass in something called ephemeral. And this basically says whether other users can see the bot's reply. So I'm going to put it as false at the start and the bot will restart. There we go. Let's head back and try our hello command again. As you can see, we got a, a hello response from the bot. So if you wanted to head back here and change this to true and run the command again, 
we'll see now only you can see this. So this is useful for admin commands, for example, or let's say you want your kick command, only the person who ran the command can see that it was successful or things like that. That is where you'd use uh, that setting, but for now, we don't need it with this because we're just uh, testing out the hello command. Okay, so now that we have our hello command working, we're gonna make, a, let's say a say hello command. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a user option into this. So we're gonna do options. We're gonna put uh, two square brackets, which basically means a list. And for the list, we need a list of objects. The one error you might see here already is that we have a red underline under the options. And as you can see, a comma was expected. So after every object, uh, property you need to add a comma just to make the next one valid so within the options uh, object for the first object we need a name which we're going to have user we need a description description which is going to be the user you want to say hello to we need if it's required or not we're going to make it required and we need a type so the type is basically defined under discord dot constants dot application command option types so it's a bit of a lot it auto fills it for you really if you look through the lists but basically this is all the option types we can have and we're going to choose dot user one small thing you need to change here is where we have user this actually needs to be lowercase we can just make it just call it person for example and that will then fix that issue there so now we're going to go ahead and handle this response we're going to do if name is equal to uh, say hello First, we want to get the user that they gave in the command. So we're going to do let user equal options dot get user. And then we're going to get the name of what we put in here. So person. And now we should have the user that they give. So we can do interaction dot reply uh, content. Uh, hello. And then the way that you would add variables into this. So if you want to have hello in the user's name, you put a dollar sign, curly brackets, and inside of the curly brackets, write user dot username. So what that will do now is it will write a reply with the content hello, and then with this curly bracket and the dollar sign, we can put a variable user dot username. So we head back here, we head back now, and we try slash say hello. As we can see, hello tutorial, and tutorial is the user we inputted. We do such say hello and then me, it will say hello Sam. So that is basically a really basic introduction to how slash commands work, how options work, and that's all we'll be covering in this episode. In the next episode, we'll look at branching our commands out to a commands folder and just keep progressing with using different options and different parts of Discord.js. So thank you guys for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next episode.